Yeah. Hey, you know I got a testimony, right? I mean, I was just thinking about where I was at in life. Smoked out. Before I gave it up to God and where I'm at now, you know. It's been good to me. Let's go. Used to be smoked out, drinking whatever I could swallow. Knowing that I'm sinning and still blessing the bottle. Living with no direction, just chasing after the high. Stuck in the Great Depression, the lowest one in my life. Dying to break free, but was imprisoned by my pride. Plotting a great escape from this jail within my mind. My thoughts were like Hello, all, and this is Men Do Talk. I'm your host, Kayan, and we're here today at the Museum Sights and Sounds, uh, brought to you by Mr. James Horton. And uh, today we'll be giving him uh, uh, or talking to him today about how he started this museum as well as what all he has into it. Mr. Horton, how are you doing today? He's great. How about you? Great, great. Uh, today we want to ask you a couple questions about how did Sight and Sound become? Well, it started many, many years ago. And the idea was given to me by my great grandmother. She said to me when I was about seven or eight years old that I was going to travel the world telling our story. Now, at that particular time, it was funny because I stuttered when I, was, I talked. So I would say to her, well, I, well uh, how, how am I, I going to tell somebody and I, I can't talk? She said, boy, the day is going to come that people are going to try to shut you up. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't understand at that particular time, but she started telling me she wanted me to, to tell our story. And she said, the story that you're going to tell is the story that my great-grandmother told me about Africa, what happened during slavery, and you'll pass that on. So that's how the seed got planted inside. And from that seed, it has grown to what it is now. Okay. And, and you also uh, have people who come in and donate things? Yeah. The, the museum has pretty close to probably about 10, 15,000 pieces of artifacts and literature. This information and all many of the artifacts are donation. People come through, they see what we're attempting and what we're trying to do, and they will donate items to the museum. I just got, a few days ago, someone brought me a newspaper article. I mean, the original newspaper article that showcased Abraham Lincoln assassination and funeral. Wow, wow, that, that's powerful. People do hold on to a lot of stuff. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Uh, and and the, the amazing museum that you have here that, that have a lot of different artifacts, what's one of the pieces that really talked to you? Wow. Now that's a tough one. Uh, I, didn't, I wasn't prepared for that. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the one that's part of the museum that's the most fascinating to me is the piece that I'm putting together on Africa. And I say that because when I grew up as a child, until almost my adult life, I thought Africa was a place that was in control by someone by the name of Tarzan, Jane, and Cheetah. <laughs> now when I share that with people, they, they laugh at me and they look at me like, what are you talking about? I said, you got to think about the time when I grew up as a child and I watched what was on television which I no longer call television, I call it telling you your vision. Okay. In uh, research, looking at Africa just put me in a total different perspective as to who we are as a people and also why we are here and why it's so important, as my great-grandmother said to me, to make sure we tell our story. Great, great. That, that's uh, something great because we need more of not what's on TV, but more of what's, what has actually happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I know here at the museum you have an exhibit that shows um, things that African Americans made. Uh, can you give us a little information about that? <laughs> you got me. Uh, that is the, probably the number two exhibit, I say, in the museum. And once again, it's uh, things that was invented by African Americans that we can prove because the patent company gave them the patent for it. My research has shown me that there's over 5,000 patents that are given to African Americans here in America, over 5,000. 
I have on display here a couple of maybe a hundred. But I do have a book by this young man who lives here in the metro Atlanta area, and that's what he does. He does research, and one of the things he's looking at is the different uh, patents and different things that we as African Americans has invented, and we have the patent for. One of the most interesting one on the uh, display is a wrench. Now, I once again I always relate to things that happened when I was a child growing up okay. versus what I'm finding today. Okay. When I was a young man growing up, my grandfather and even my father sometimes would say to me when they're working around the house, boy, go get me that monkey's wrench. And I, always, I would go find the wrench and bring it to them. And I always wonder, why is they calling this the monkey wrench? Okay. Now, I know that no monkey invented this wrench. Right. It's almost like somebody was telling me when I was growing up, Get away from here, you little monkey. And I said, why are you saying the monkey? Because we evolved from the monkey. And I would say to them, well, why are the monkeys still evolving into us then if that's where we came from? Right. So I'm looking at this by the way by the wrench, you know. Okay. To my surprise in the research and what I started doing, looking for things that was invented by black people and African Americans here in America, I found out a gentleman by the name of Mr. Jack Johnson, the first black heavyweight <laughs> boxer. Okay. Yeah. He is the one that has the patent for the wrench. 1922, he invented and has the patent for the wrench. And then I said, now that is why, and someone I was talking to about that said, that's why they call it the monkey wrench, because they used to call black people monkeys. So go get me the monkey's wrench, or don't buy that monkey's wrench. That one was a very surprise to me. And then the other one was the golf tee. Okay. When I found out about that, and my son gave me some information behind that. And I said, why in the world would a black man invent a golf tee? And my son said, Dad, when it was time for him, the master, to hit the ball, he would put his, say, okay, boy, put that ball on your finger. And he said one day, no, so balls, put the stick in the ground, hit it off this. I said, you're probably right. <laughs> yeah, he didn't want that yeah, finger to go nowhere. Right. So I started looking at many of those uh, inventions and things that we had created, and many of them was necessary. We needed to have a way to make life easier for us to maintain and do certain things. So you come up with ideas and you do it. That I encourage. Mm -hmm. I tried very hard to run young entrepreneurs programs out of here. Okay. And I would say to young people around the inventor's table, use that, look, you still have the right and you still have the know where and know how, how to create things. Mm -hmm. If you don't, you can improve. Don't think just because you see these inventions over here on the table. They're always looking for a way to have things that's already been invented, give it more lifespan. So think about that too. So we, we teach that. We try to get our young people to start thinking about that at a very early age. Let's Get Your Life Back Productions provides videography services, photography services, and much, much more. Please visit us on our website at www.letsgetyourlifeback.com or on all the social medias. Okay. And you, um, you have a lot of exhibits here. Can you go through them uh, a little bit and let us know, you know uh, uh, what's your first to your last exhibit? Sure. We start off with Meet the Collector. Meet the Collector became a part of the museum for my oldest son. He watched me do a tour, and when it was over with, he offered to take me out to dinner. I knew something was up, because he was uh, going to pay for the dinner. And we went out, and he said, Dad, you need to put something in about you. When you're talking to people, and you tell people that you went to China in 1977, and you tell people that you actually met Governor George Wallace, and he appointed you as Lieutenant Colonel in his militia, and you tell people that you met Maya Angelou, and you hold hell our hand and all that, they look at you and say, you got to be the lionest black man in the world. No way. <laughs> you, you're involved in those kinds of things. Right. Or you went to the University of Alabama in the 70s when there was not the time for black people, you know, to go to school there. And I put the exhibit up. And what I found out in visiting one of the local high schools, and I asked the young people, what's your favorite exhibit? And they said to me, meet the collector. And I went, why? They said, because we know you know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. So that's the part. And then you go from there to Africa. And then from Africa to the Underground Railroad in the Civil War. Then a special exhibit of figurines that my mother collected. She collected hundreds of them as part of it. 
and then you go to what I call grandmothers and great grandmothers and mothers kitchen. In that area, you will see items that they used during that back in the day, in the days from an ice tray from, made of aluminum that you pull up and the ice cubes come out to okay. so SNS green stamps. And there are probably some people who know about the SNS green stamps back during that particular time. In uh, the outhouse and tools from an old sl slave plantation. You go from there to a special exhibit on Dr. Martin Luther King, from there to the Buffalo Soldiers, to the Tuskegee Airmen, to the movie exhibit, a special uh, exhibit on black women, past and present. Also, the Civil Rights Movement, and there's an exhibit on uh, a little bit about Selma, Alabama in 1966, uh, during the time of the Bloody Sunday there. Uh, I have a, a collection of black dolls, particularly the Barbie dolls and different dolls that we share with the young ladies. Then we go to Michael Jackson. We have a special exhibit that's dealing with sports. Uh, people like uh, Jackie Robinson all the way to Michael Jordan there shows that, shows that. And you have a special exhibit that deal with music. We start back with, before Motown, way back. Some people may know about Blind Mellow Jello. Okay, <laughs> okay. And I, I have an eight track player over there that actually plays. So we get a lot of fun when people come through that. A special display that sh talks about black historical colleges and universities, and also the Greek, different Greek organization, both female and male. Uh, Dr. Max Stuffin mm -hmm. also is there, and uh, who else is there? Princess Tiana, uh, Disney's first black princess, and then this other uh, special one on doc by Dr. Max Stuffin that's showing, and sh showing that uh, black little girls had the possibility to become doctors and all that good positive image uh, type uh, display. Then you go to the one that I have called Black Wheels. Now Black Wheels talk about automobile. Mm -hmm. Automobiles uh, making uh, shows how the first racing that was done, drag strip and all that kind of stuff that was done. So that's a part of it too. We mentioned the invention table, inventors table, and then also the uh, President Obama okay. is there. And the very new exhibit that's now becoming a part of the museum is the Black Panthers. Now that is gonna be a, a little controversial because and I've been sharing it with some people when they come through. Because see, I live through the, what I consider the real Black Panthers, not the comic book Black Panthers. Okay. You know, I know about the Black Panthers of, of the 60s and, and I, I, I share some of the philosophy and some of the things that they did and had to pass on to the young people, make sure that if when you start talking about them, are you gonna be talking about what the, in the comics or you wanna talk about what was real? And I, some, sometime they leave out of here a little anger at me, but I'm telling the truth. And I tell you anything I tell you about this museum and share with you, I can prove to you that it's facts. Okay, good, good. I think I got them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, that is a lot of exhibits and, and it's a lot of information to take in I know that nowadays most of the children only get the black history information from what school may provide, not all of the actual facts. Uh, the, 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 the books that they read some of this stuff from or some of the dialogue that they get from it is not as deep as what they can learn from coming here. Well, I've been told, and I, and I get asked that lots of times, even when I was in school, and there's a couple of schools don't want me in because they say, I talk about things that's not in the curriculum. I said, but it's facts, and you know it's facts and can be proven, and that's very important to do that. It's important to tell our young people the truth. Mm -hmm. I, I, I know many people my age, we're having some issues in dealing with America and what's going on here, basically because we was not told the truth, only part of, of the truth. And there's some things that, <laughs> that I've said uh, during that time, like not in, in the curriculum. Now, I had a young lady who came through here. She was in the uh, fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And I shared some things with her about Harry Tubman and the Underground Railroad and actually about William Steele, who was known as the father of the Underground Railroad. And Harry Tubman, the real name was not Harry Tubman at birth. It was Armenti Ross, and they shared that with her, the old lawn jockey, and they had negative ideas about him. And when she went back and she shared that with her teachers and some of her, <laughs> the students, the teacher came and visit, and she told me. 
she said, what you told her and what she was saying, I knew it was the truth, but I would get fired if I taught that. And they knew that I was teaching that, even though I could prove to them just like you could in the books and history books that it's true. It's the curriculum. And see, that's the thing is that, uh, again, the, the, the schools aren't teaching all of it. And if the teachers know it, they can't teach it all because they may get fired or something of that nature. But uh, Mr. Horton, we have had a joy in learning and talking to you about sights and sounds. Well, how, how could someone get in contact or um, uh, where, is, where are you located? We're located at 2050 Lawrenceville Highway in Decatur, Georgia, at the uh, North DeKalb Mall, uh, which is a place that most people say, the last place in the world that you'll be looking for a museum is in the mall. There's a reason for it, because people come to the mall and they're coming shopping, and uh, lots of people come to malls and lots of people shop. And then the museum also is, we don't charge, it's donation. You come through, you look at it. If you like to leave a donation, we welcome it. And if you don't, uh, you also can get me on Facebook. It's James Horton, or you could go to my uh, email address, which is James underscore Horton 35 at Yahoo. We don't travel with it as much as we used to. We're finding, trying to find a permanent location that we could put it in, kind of have an idea of where we like for it to be, but I have to be very careful because they might not want me to put it where I want to okay. <laughs> put it. <Okay. laughs> but I just have enough faith and believe in the Creator who is, I know, is the reason for this being here and in giving me the opportunity to do this. These, all these artifacts that you see are very special and I appreciate it and we're here. Well, again, this is Mr. James Horton with the Museum of Sights and Sounds. He's again at the North DeKalb Mall, and you can also hit him on, uh, get information from him on his uh, Facebook page uh, of James Horton. Again, this is Men Do Talk. Uh, final thoughts are uh, everyone, everyone of color, you need to come and see the exhibits here at uh, Sights and Sounds Museum. Again, it starts from Africa all the way around to the first black president, and also uh, the uh, Black Panther, the movie. Um, there is a difference between the two, Black Panther back in the 60s and Black Panther, the movie. But anyway, this is the end of the show. This is Men Do Talk. I'm Kayan, your host. See you next issue. <laughs> So good to be new